right, guys. Here, finally, is uh, the revised kit for the RE4 Leon Kennedy inspired gun. Um, this one, of course, if y'all are here, let me get this out of the way. You already know that, you know, it's got the working slide, working hammer, removable mag. See down in it, so. All right, sorry, I'm a little under the weather today, but we'll work through this. So we're, we'll go ahead and get started. Um, let me set this off to the side. Uh, this is the way the kit will come. Sorry about the glare. Um, there's a link on the bag. And again, if most of y'all are here watching this, then you already know that. <laughs> so it comes with the parts. It comes with our mag, our slide, and our frame. Let me mute my phone real quick because the 9,000 notifications will drive us all crazy. Okay, so um, like I said, frame, slide, mag, and a bag full of parts. So let's set this off to the side. What I'm gonna cover real quick the type of glue that I use. You can use thick super glue, but it, the, the only downside of super glue is it's short work time. In other words, as soon as you stick two parts together, it instantly starts curing, so you don't get to move stuff around if you screw up or whatever. I use what's called a CA glue. It's a two-part glue. It's basically super glue with the activator for it separately. So you have a little bit work, more working time, get it where you want, spray the part, instantly sets. I'm not endorsing this brand. It's just a brand that I changed to a couple of years ago, and I've had zero issues, no bad batches or anything, but uh, this to me, if you're going to do any kind of work, assembly work, model work, you know, any cosplay, you know, costume work or whatever, CA glue is the way to go. Um, and also on this kit, I mean, you need um, some metric Allen wrenches and uh, I'm trying to think, uh, yeah, just metric Allen wrenches basically. I just have these little sets, these bit sets. I have so many setting all in my shop, in my office, uh, in here. Um, these come from Harbor Freight. They're like 10 bucks. But any of these little bit sets, it's kind of the way to go anytime you're, you know, working or building any of these. And in reality, there's probably, there's just a couple bits you need. One will be a, um, a 1.5 millimeter for the set screws. Uh, the other one, I think, is a 2.5 um, which I actually have a separate driver that I use for the little bit bigger ones just because I have this set laying around. Let's go ahead and get started on this though. We'll pull out the parts and, and see what's all in here. Here is the tube, the tubing that comes for the, the laser. It goes from the laser up around to the little mock pressure switch. We have our two magnets for our uh, mag. Let's see. And then let's get the rest of these parts out here. We will have our left and right grips. Uh, and these I made separate because a lot of you guys were begging me to make them separate. And yeah, and, and I wanted to originally, and they were so super thin on the model that they created. Um, it's kind of too thin to be a real good grip, but um, you know, th this part is still two colors, wood grain and then black, and then you have the silver screws. I didn't put real screws in this one just because of how thin the grip is and how thin the walls of the, um, the actual receiver is, just because there's not room or enough meat to bite and form threads. So something like this, I would paint this whole thing, do the wood grain, the whole thing. And then after I was done with the wood grain, I would take like a, a flat or, or whatever uh, clear coat and just mist it a couple times. You're not trying to get a full cover on it. Uh, then go ahead and what the, the reason you missed it with clear coat is that clear coat has so much hardener in it that it will help protect and keep you from peeling off your paint job of what you've already done. So then you can take tape, go ahead and tape down and run down all the edges and you can put a piece across the, the, the curve and use a razor blade and cut the tape. But <clears throat> with my shaky hands and, and my impatience, I just peel, I just tear little pieces of tape off 
and work my way all the way around the curves and stuff. Then I would paint the center section and, um, <clears throat> excuse me, the screw heads. I would paint all of it black. And then when the black is done, just mist it with a little bit of the, the flat clear coat or whatever. And the reason I say flat is because the, when you use gloss clear coat, it's a very slick surface. And even though you get chemical bonding between one surface to another, the, the slickness the, uh, of, and the hardened surface of, of gloss clear coat uh, inhibits the, the, the real good bonding if it's already fully cured. So if you use the, the matte finish, it still has, um, what's a good term, uh, pores. It, it still has enough textured surface that it helps uh, the next layer's grip. But after you paint all this black, clear, of course, peel your tape off, clear coat it, just, you know, mist it. You don't have to try to get a full clear coat. That way you're not building up a bunch of layers. Then you're down just to the screws. And with that, you can either, and I, and I purposely made nice deep indentions around because if you wanted to take a paintbrush, you can take a paintbrush and stick down in the grooves and pull back up and get a really nice line. I put a nice and deep indention in there. Uh, if you, you know, are just wanting to spray them, you d do the same thing, tape around them. Of course, like I said, little pieces of tape side by side by side by side makes a you can make a really nice circle with little pieces of torn tape using the straight edge of the the tape as you go on or you can put a whole piece of tape on here and press it down real good and take a razor knife and cut i just find that when you cut you don't leave enough to press down in there and make a good line so i on these i would probably even with my shaky hands take a paintbrush a small a small flat paintbrush and just pull up around it until you get there and then you can you know paint the surface better uh, then when you're done, you know, just mist it a little bit with clear coat and you can go in and rub you some weathering in some like acrylic black or, uh, um, some rusty color, uh, acrylic paint, uh, water-based paint, rub it all in, wait for it to dry, take a wet cloth and rub at it and rub at it and rub at it. And what happens is little bitty lines highlight all the, the creases and the indentions and you can rub at it and rub at it because Water-based acrylic paint, even when it's dry, if you take a, like a wet cloth and you go to rubbing, it will break up and come right back off. And it will leave all the deep grooves and dentions and it makes everything just pop out. And when you're done, then you can clear coat over the whole thing. You can clear coat right over acrylic paint. It seals it all in nicely and all good, good and done there. So, sorry, long-winded on that, but I just thought I'd give a little bit of advice on, on the painting and that, and that, and that painting tip goes anytime you're painting anything that's multicolored and you want to do one color first, do the color that, you know, is, is the, the, the largest part of the part, mist it with some flat clear coat, let it cure fully tape off, do the same thing, repeat for each color. But of course, you know, removing your tape in between each one. But, uh, so we have our laser pointer, we have our trigger our little um, pressure switch that goes on the side of the grip. We have a rear sight. We have our orange tip. We have, this is the called the barrel lock on the parts list. And I'll show you that in a second. This is our slide lock. And this is our hammer. This is the linkage part that goes from the trigger back to release the hammer when it's cocked. This is our barrel tip which I'm assuming in the game, they, they made this to represent uh, a threaded barrel for threading on like a suppressor or whatever. So, and then here's our hardware. First, you have the really big spring now that I'm, I'm, I, I started stocking for these kits that have the working slides like the Sentinel, um, the Sentinel right here and the Robocop and, and those guns. So, uh, well, the Robocop doesn't use this one. It still uses uh, multiple of the smaller springs that may be updated at some point, but it works great the way it is. So you have the larger spring and then let's get in here. We have two of the normal springs. This is the most uh, commonly used one in all my kits. And then we have two of these, um, Allen 20 mil, M3 20 millimeter Allen socket heads. 
Then we have two set screws. And for those of you that, that may ask, because I do get to ask this, these screws are not missing their head. If you look right down in the end right there, an Allen wrench goes in there. And I know this isn't an Allen wrench, this is a Torx bit, but it goes right in the end. And that's how you screw these in. The reason we, I use these is because they, you use these in places that you don't want a screw head to stick out. Like um, here on the Sentinel, that's what that's what the, the 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 trigger rides on and the hammer as well but it's back behind the grip in here uh the only thing that i don't have and by the way there's two of these one is a 16 millimeter long and one's a 12 millimeter long so it's very easy to tell them apart um what was i just about to say i'll think of it in a minute anyways so what we'll do is we'll go ahead and we'll put the slide together first um, wait just a sec. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, and the other part here is the barrel, which I didn't have in the bag just then. That's why I was looking around like, where the heck is my barrel? Uh, this is going to be, we need the, the barrel, the slide, the slide lock, and we'll need the rear sight. And the rest of this stuff, I'm just going to kind of push over here out of the way a little bit. Oh, and we'll also need the large spring. So th this is this is fairly simple. Um, the the large spring goes on the smaller shaft here, which that's the slide guide, uh, the sp slide spring guide. Anyways, so the easiest way to install this, if you were just to stick this in here, you would start hitting like, you know, you got a floppy spring and you can't hit that hole. <laughs> uh, but just pull the spring back. And then take this and stick it in here. And what you're trying to do is stick it right there in that hole. That's it. You can let go of the spring, but hold on to the barrel because if you let go, it'll shoot back. And it comes back too far, and that's where this comes into play. This is going to get glued in. It will get dropped in and pushed to the back. And it will sit in there just like that. And what happens is now the barrel stops. It can't come all the way back out and be removed or anything. So what we're going to do is... Hold our, um, our barrel and spring forward. I'm going to get my glue here. And pop the top on that. And all we need, we don't need a bunch of glue. Because once, well, once again, you glue this stuff, it works really well. But So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this. I'm going to put a drop on the side, the back, and there. Fucking my old shaky hands, man. I swear. Anyway, so you look in there. I put a drop there, there, there. That's all that's really needed. I'm gonna flip my slide over. And if y'all are using super glue, you know this is one of the downsides is is the short work time. I'm gonna drop that in there and push it all the way back and down, and it's done. Very very easy. So that's the. Basically the full assembly except for putting on our rear sight. And I'm just going to go in here. And by the way, if, if, if you guys have never used one of these, if you're doing any model work or anything, um, this is like a PVC pipe trimmer for cleaning up plastic PVC pipe or they use it in all types of industries. But I mean, you can go to Home Depot or whatever and go to the plumbing department. <clears throat> and they have a Home Depot brand, an HD brand. And it's actually my favorite. This one this rotates too freely for me so when i go to use it i just i don't like it the, the home depot one gets held uh pretty much wherever you push it at um the reason i'm showing you that is because you can come clean up these little flat edges um because this will print down so there might be a little smushing because it's such a thin part and just it's a very, very handy tool over trying to use a razor knife that can turn and gouge into your part. The way this blade is designed is it will gouge only so much and it's designed to keep itself from coming out or going in. So kind of however much pressure you put to dig in and then you pull it, that's kind of where it rides. But this has an angle on the, on one side that goes to the front, uh, to the front of the slide. So when it's on, it looks just like that. So all I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna flip that over. I'm gonna just put like a teeny tiny drop. 
I'm going to spray and miss it twice. And I'm just going to take it and drop it in there and put my fingers on each side. <clears throat> when you do that, it will help you center between two things. And there we go. So the, the, the rear sight's on. It's, it's fully cured and dried. And there we go. Uh, okay, so the next we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and do the magnets real quick and get that out of the way. There's a hole in the back of the mag for a magnet and then a hole in the back of the, the receiver for the, for the magnet. And my little thing, my little mantra that I do in my brain, because some of you, if, if none of you guys have done this, I hope you don't, but sometimes when you're putting magnets in, you'll glue them in, uh, opposing each other. Like right now they're, they're together the right polarity. If I flip these over, you know, if, you know, magnets push apart, like I'm, I'm see, they want to go back the right way, but Anyway, so if you glue one in and then glue the other one in wrong and you go to put them together instead of attracting, they'll push apart. So what I do is I just leave them together and I put a black mark or whatever color Sharpie or whatever you have. Let that dry for a minute. And to, to, this isn't that deep of a place, but if you're ever trying to put in a magnet that's in a deep place, I just stick them to a screwdriver and what I'll do is in my brain, I'm always saying back to the black, black to the back or whatever color you have, you get in a little brain, little mantra thing you got going on there. But, um, so I just put in a, a drop in there. Uh, remember when you put this in, it's going to squish out everywhere. And so I'm just going to spray the back side of that magnet and I'm going to stick both magnets in there and then pull my screwdriver off. I pulled sideways and then I reach in there and I pull the other magnet off, slide it off. Now that magnet is, is mounted in there nice and firm. You can wipe your finger across if it squeezed out any glue or anything. We're good to go there. So now on this one, all we have to remember is I have a black mark. Let me pick this up. It's kind of shiny for you guys. I have a black mark still on there. So now I just, when I put it in, I want to put black to the back. That's all I, all I have to remember. So I'm going to put drop in there, spray that black on to the back in there. There's any glue and things like this. You can do before you paint your mag, glue this in, paint your mag. You can paint right over the mag. It doesn't affect how uh, it's strength or anything. You're good to go. And uh, same here, if you want to glue this in and, and just paint inside here, but also remember, you know, when you have two parts that slide together, there's a gap. And I, I always calculate in a paint gap uh, for to allow for some added thickness of the paint on here. And if you get any paint down in here, of course, that's the normal thickness. And also remember when you're spray painting, Every coat does not have to be a solid coat because it's easier to put more paint on than it is to take off. So like if you're painting this, let it, let it almost fully dry, go back, hit it again. I normally don't even have a solid coat until I'm doing my third coat because lighter is better. Um, Michael with fan fiction props painted that painted this. And all the tolerance is in it. If you see all the paint is nice and solid. He even did a little rubberized and he did basically on these grips. What I was talking about, he painted this whole grip black. Well, actually he, he used, uh, um, it's a black textured paint, painted the grip, taped everything off and then painted the rest black, pulled the, pa uh, the tape off and then painted black again and all done. So, uh, same technique, but you know, everything on here, all of this is painted. There's plenty of gap in there. It's no problem. So everything still works as it should. Just that's, the, that's the thing you, you can, you can keep adding paint, but always start your spray off your part, come across your part, leave your part, then let off the nozzle. Don't ever at your part because you will 1000% screw it up every time. If you're sitting there trying to paint like that, it's always off. Start before and come off, just ch -ch 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 -ch. 
and it's just light sprays. And I'm not saying you have to go super fast. It's shh, 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 and it, I, I know my sound effects are great and stuff, but anyways, so our mag's in, it's nice and tight. You actually have to pull it out. Um, we'll set this over here. <coughs> the grips, I'm gonna go ahead and glue the grips onto the frame just to get that out of the way. If you notice, there's an indention, which is uh, it's just slightly larger than the, the grips themselves, which also um, will allow for really nice definition once it's all painted of the grip setting on the frame. Uh, so on this, all I do is come in here and just put a Ziggy in here, maybe a little bit more Nana. There we go. And I'm gonna flip my grip over. I'm going to spray it and put it on, make sure it's in the groove. Apply a little pressure. Wait a second. We're done. And same thing with the other side. We'll flip this over. Take this and pop it right on there. There we go. So grips are on, mag's done, slide's done. Um, now, this, this is the part y'all will probably cuss me a little bit on, I understand, but also you have to remember when you're working with, without trying to go with these little tiny, weird, complicated springs and stuff, sometimes fitting is tight. Um, this is one of these hold your tongue the right direction. First, I'm gonna tell you, take this part, this is the linkage, and right down in here, you'll see there's a, a groove right there and, a, and, a, and in two little grooves right there. What happens is this part will slide into that groove. And sometimes beforehand, you might have to slide it in and, and kind of clean it up in there a little bit. Just make sure there's no boogies in there. But what you want is you want that to, to operate in there just like that. That's all you're looking for. So you want to move fully to the back of that, that slot right there. If it's not moving fully to the back, I try my best when I'm cleaning up to get all the support material, just kind of look down in there in an angle and make sure there's not a little piece back there in the back or whatever. You know, I am human, I screw up daily, so I try not to, but that's, that's the way life is. Um, you know, but okay. So what we're gonna do here is now that we've cleaned that and made sure that's okay, we want to get our trigger and we want the smallest, the shortest of the two set screws. So we're going to get that. And what we'll want to do is we want the trigger. Here, let me grab my Allen wrench. There's the top hole here. And so if you look at the way the trigger is in my hand, we want to screw in from this side. And I always start, I, I, I set these up as well as I can to make it easy to start these, but I look down to make sure it's 90 degrees. And then I'll look at another angle to make sure it's 90 degrees. And then we just screw this one in. And now this one, we're gonna screw and make it come out the other side. And we're gonna stop when it's flush on this side. There a bit more. There we go. So if you notice, it's flush there, sticking out there. And what it is, is when we drop the trigger into the body, which, you know, you have the trigger facing the right direction. What it is, is you've got this notch sticking out, which will be for the linkage, this hole right here. So basically this goes in here. I can get my tongue just right. Push it past there. And this will be the part y'all kind of cuss me on because when I put when we have the spring in here doing this, it's it's a lot to hold on to. But that goes in there just like that, and that and that's how that works. And that and that that's our movement that we have in there. So I'm going to take this loose for a second and go ahead and pop that out. Now this is the cussing part y'all will cuss me for. See the hole down there in the back of the trigger? You see this hole? This is where one of these normal springs is going to go. Um, it, it's a very short gap between here and the frame in there. So this is highly compressed. 
And actually, before we do this, I apologize. Let's put the hammer in first. Um, well, actually, you know what? We don't really have to do that. Never mind. Never mind. Because I, I, I forget it doesn't matter about that back there. So the easiest way I found to do this is to kind of put that in there and hold it down at an angle. And you're going to want to try to bend this. <laughs> And I'll, I'll screw it up a couple times here just because it's, it's a pain in the butt. And some of y'all might find a better way to do this. But I put it in and I get the trigger and the spring to start coming out of the bottom. And what I do is try to hold it there. Just put some sideway pressure on, on that. I get a screwdriver and push it and it goes into the hole then back here don't let off pressure because you know you gotta then just rotate this and push it down and what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a screw through this hole um, <clears throat> but don't don't let go pressure on the the trigger here the easiest thing to do is grab it on both sides down at the bottom because we've got to let it come up a little bit so that we can take our linkage and stick our linkage in and we have to let it come up enough to where oh, without without letting go of the spring pop that on and then push the whole thing down and hold on to it and get you a 20 millimeter screw the 20 millimeter socket and from this side you're going to want to come in you have to make sure you're hitting the hole of the trigger and now you can let go and this is this is this is what we're we're working with here. That's all that movement we get out of that linkage. That's all we need. So what we're going to do is now that we have the screw slit in there, we're going to take this slide lock. Okay, the slide lock. You'll see the screw sticking through. We're going to put the slide lock in there and set it in this. It's got a little tab that it rests on right there. Push the slide lock in, and you'll see it push the screw out a bit. And we're just going to take this and screw this into the slide lock. And we're going to screw this until the slide lock starts to get tight and then just back it off about a quarter of a turn so that it, it moves nice and so we don't want this screw super tight to where it's squeezing it all because when we move the slide lock, it's rotating the screw just a little bit. And the slide lock rotation only goes from there to there. It's a small movement is all, is all it's doing. So now that we've, we've got the trigger and like I said, y'all are gonna cuss me on that. And you know, some of these things are, like I said, a nice tight fit and a pain in the butt. So we've got our linkage, it stays flush. And that's our, that's our trigger action right there. So now we're gonna to wanna to put in the hammer so what I do on the hammer is I get the other set screw. You have a hole in the side of the, the frame right there. I take the set screw and I'll check a couple different angles, make sure it's not angled down. And I'm checking for 90 degrees to the body. So 90 to the body. And then I'll look at another angle and make sure it's 90 to the body. And if it is, then you know you're, you're, you're going good. Um, if you get a little crooked, Nine times out of 10, it will straighten itself up. But if you, if you look inside, let me find, see if I can get a better, you'll see the hole right down in there. And you'll see whenever I, I start to come out of the hole, get some better, okay. So if you see the screw starts coming out of that hole right there, let me get up there a little bit closer. See it coming out? I'm gonna back it up to where it's setting flush with the body. Okay, that way we're, we're already set up and ready and we're not trying to hold the hammer and blah, 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 all that crap. So all we're going to do is, you notice there's a hole in the back of the hammer. There's a hole down inside the frame. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this spring, put it down in the, to the hole of the frame. And let me drop the hammer because you don't need that yet. And I put it there. It's, it's a little bit of a tight fit at that hole purposely. So I take it and then I'll take like a flat blade screwdriver and go about two link, uh, two uh, twist up the the uh, the spring, 
and just push it towards the hole and you'll hear it click in. Now it's there. And basically same with the hammer. And if you don't get it fully down in there, don't worry about it because when you first put the hammer in and you cock it a few times, it'll, it'll go ahead and seat the spring. And the spring kind of just somewhat fits in there a little bit. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna push this in and what we're doing is shooting to line that hole up with this. And it's, it's kind of one of those things, it's, it's holding your tongue just right. What may happen when you first start screwing this in, and what I try to do is look from the side here and get it lined up and then push down and then kind of try to hold all of it. If you go to screw this in and it stops just like that, see now I missed the hole, but I wedged it up against the frame. I'll back this out a little bit, move it around, and there, I hit the hole. All right, and screw that in until it stops or just till it disappears in the body. So try not to pull this back and let it go right now. Well, uh, actually we, we have the, uh, the, um, the linkage in there, so that's fine. It'll, it'll lock, but don't pull it, like hold your finger here if you're gonna pull the trigger. Cause if you let fly forward, you might pop the spring out of the back. The, the, the slide ends up stopping it. So now we're at the point of just going ahead and putting the slide on. So what we can do is just go all the way back, get everything out of the way. And we're, we're, we're going to the point of where it just, it stops. We need another 20 millimeter screw and we get it started in the body. And I'm gonna make sure it's going straight. And it, it's gonna line up with that, the hole in the barrel that's, that, uh, that's sticking down from the barrel because it has no choice but to line up because the barrel stops against the frame so it lines up perfectly. And we're gonna put that in there and tighten that down. We're gonna work this back a few times. So there we go. And then you can pull this back and have the, the slide lock lock on there. Now, if you notice like this, when I'm moving, it doesn't come forward. Uh, a lot of the times around the holes of the slide, you'll want to clean them out. Um, but the, the easiest thing to do is to take this. And work it back and forth. There you go. So, and then we can put the mag, the mag in there. So the, now the next thing for us to do is, and I'll probably, I mean, I would suggest go ahead and clean around the holes, even though I have the holes enlarged fine. Uh, I clean out the holes pretty good um, right before I start painting to increase the amount of gap right there. Um, so here's, we're, we're at the, uh, the, let's see, we'll go ahead and put on the barrel tip real quick. So on the barrel tip, we don't need to gob glue everywhere because we're wanting it to go in there and it just sets in the end of the barrel. That's all it does. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to just put it on the edge of this dude, just like that. Not much. I'm gonna spray the end of the barrel in my hand and everything else. And I will take the dude and glue it on. And there we go. So that's on. Now we've, we've got the hose for the flashlight. Now this hose, there's a hole back here and you'll probably have to clean it out some just because this is, this is what it stands on when it prints. So. And again, like you could take just like a, a medium sized flat blade screwdriver if you wanted to and, and stick down in there and twist around and, and clean out the edge. Um, but I've had my little cutter here, so I'll just go around this edge. And most of this you'll do before you paint anyways. Um, you'll clean up your edges and... Okay. So this hose is just gonna get glued coming out 90 degree off the back. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna put just a little drop of glue in here. 
around the edge and the side. I'm going to squirt the end of my tube and I'm going to push it into the hole, hold it 90 degrees, let it fully dry. There we go. So basically what we're going to do here is this gets slid on and we'll get glued. We'll want this to come out the side and we will take this and we will glue this wire as is what we call it now. We're going to come up and we're going to glue it down the side right here and we'll come around and come down and then we're going to end up cutting this hose when we decide exactly where we want to put the pressure switch. So I'm going to go ahead and glue the laser on. Just put a little bit of drop on the back side. I'm going to spray one side of the, the frame real quick and slide it and just stop about halfway. And then I got glue on my, I got glue on my finger. Okay. So anyways, so now we're glued on. So what we're going to want to do is we'll take this dude and we'll find a nice little bend here and be like, okay, that, that looks good. I'm going to take, get my, make sure my glue comes out nicely and not like a big nasty glob. I'm just going to put a little bit of glue about that, like that on the frame and stick my hose to it. Or I'm sorry, it's now a wire. It's no longer a hose. I'm going to let it set. So now it's on there. It's out of the way. We're going to take it and we, we will decide our pressure switch just gets glued on. To, it will get glued onto the grip here. Uh, I usually will come down far enough and, and it, it's it basically what it's, what they had it set up as is your hands, your fingers rest on it so that when you draw up, you can pr apply pressure with these two fingers and it will turn the laser on pop, 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 you know, all that good stuff. So what I will do is decide where I want this and I will go ahead and glue it to the grip. But first, if you want to make sure the hole is cleaned out pretty good, you know, so, and it, it stays on there, which, you know, that, that hole should be pretty good because it, this prints down flat. So it's not like it's standing on that hole. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a little glue on the back and not a bunch because I'm going to have to decide exactly where I want to place this. I want it down far enough. It doesn't cover my logo and I don't want it sitting on my screw. So that's what I've done there. So now if I was holding this, get that out of the way. If I'm holding this, I have these two fingers to press that pressure switch to turn that on. So now what we'll want to do is we'll just take this and kind of just want a natural flow to it. Don't want like, you know, it to be exact 90 and all that stuff. I just, I just kind of put it up there and where is my razor blade? There it is. I kind of like just decide, I kind of like that flow. And remember when you do cut it and you put it down, it's going to lay against the, the frame because the holes further down. So like that to me looks kind of good. And again, this is something that you can gauge before you, you paint, you kind of lay it kind of and figure out, you know, all your, 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 uh, route you're going to take, but I'm going to glue that in and kind of hold that while it dries like that. So I'm going to take the glue and I'm going to try to put it down in the, this hole here. Let me hold it up so you guys can kind of see my shaky hands attempting to put glue in this hole. There we go. And I actually got it in there. <laughs> Bam. I'm going to stick that in and I'm going to make sure it's coming out 90 degrees or not 90, but straight with the, 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 the grip itself or the pressure switch. I'm going to let that dry for a second. I'm going to hold this just because this has to get down in there to that glue. And also just in case y'all wonder, 
uh, I've never had this interact with any paint, like hurt paint or anything. So, um, you know, it's like anything though, don't just drown everything. So now you, you have the, 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 the light switch on there or the laser switch, I should say. So there you go. And, and the only other thing that I didn't have in the bag at the time of filming this is the logo, um, uh, emblems they'll be in the bag. I just, I had to change them up a little bit from the, the previous one. They're a tad bit bigger, but they come on a, a, a little square there. they will be, uh, and normally I give two sets in case you screw uh, one of them up or whatever, but that it's sticker paper is what it is. So you'll take scissors and you'll cut around. And that's what, that's what was done here is you'll cut around the logo, the edge of the logo with a pair of scissors or whatever. And when you get it cut out, you can peel the back off. And when you peel the back off, you want to put it to where the, the logo is 90 degrees this way. Don't follow, don't put the logo where it's like on here, this logo is straight up and down the way it should be. You'd never put a logo on going with the grip. You put a logo going on to be 90 degrees with the frame and the slide or 90 degrees with the slide and stuff. And you'll just stick that on. Of course, you'll do it after, you know, you, you may go ahead and do it when you have the grips off and you're painting them. You'll stick those on. And after you've stuck them in and you like the way they look, you can clear coat over the whole thing. And it seals those logos in there. They won't, they can't come off and they are protected with the clear coat just like, like the, the rest of the kit is. And uh, let me get this out of the way. And of course, the last piece is the, orange tip, which you will need to glue on to the front of the barrel. And it has, uh, it's cut off so that it clears and goes into the frame just like it should. But, um, so yeah, there's, there, I, I started out with going to make the grip separate and I'm like, why, why am I not doing everything else to this one while I'm reworking this one? So, but there it is. I hope y'all like it. If you have any questions, either comment or go to the website and send me a, a message or whatever. Um, I do, I, I try to get back to you as quick as I can. Sometimes there's a delay just because there's a lot of messages and, and you know, a lot of things going on because I am a one man person, you know, one man show. I, I design and make all of my own models, but I also have to print, clean, bag, ship. So sometimes there may be a delay or whatever. If you send me a message and you don't hear from me, Send, send me another message. And the only reason you didn't hear from me is because I, I may get a notification look and for whatever reason that notification gets wiped off or whatever, it's not me ignoring you or whatever. It's just, it's, it's just the way, way it is. But uh, there it is. I hope you guys like it. Um, and I'll see you on the next one.